waiting five years for something God would have given you in five minutes. Dr. Tony Evans says before God gives, he sometimes wants to see what we'll give up. When God sees your worship, he makes your provision. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. We love it when we receive blessings from God, but what if he wanted one of those blessings back, the one we value most? Today, Dr. Evans will tell us the story of a man who faced exactly that situation. Let's join him. There probably isn't a name more celebrated a compound name more known, more referenced than Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. When God uses a compound name, it is normally because he's addressing a situation in life. Something is going on in somebody's life and circumstance that God wants to use to unveil himself. Please notice the problem. Verse 1 of chapter 22 of Genesis says, Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham, and Abraham said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. It says, The Lord tested Abraham. This is a test. He tested Abraham in the most devastating way. He says, I want you to go up on the mountain and I want you to worship me. And as is the custom of the day, I want a sacrifice. And today, the sacrifice will be your son, your only begotten son whom you love to death. Let me put it another way. I'm going to test you, Abraham. I want you to give me the thing you love most. The thing you're most excited about. The thing that was a dream come true for you. I want it. I want you to give it back to me. God had told Abraham, I'm going to make of your son Isaac a great nation. Isaac is a teenager when this takes place. Isaac's not married. Isaac has no children, yet God says, kill him. So, God doesn't make sense in what he's asking him to do in light of what his word had already promised. Anybody in here in a theological contradiction? (laughs) You know God said one thing, but what he's asking you to do now contradicts what you know he said. It doesn't make sense. Abraham is facing the trial of his life. He goes up to the mountain. His son wants to know. He says, I see the torch with the fire, verse 7, and I see, I see the wood, but I don't see the lamb. Dad, every time we came to church, you would have a lamb. I don't see a lamb. He makes a statement here that's powerful. Verse 8, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. God put Abraham in a situation that only he could fix. Abraham couldn't fix this. He couldn't solve this. This was not something within his human power. He said, God got to do this himself. God hadn't even given me nothing to help with. They come to the place, verse 9. He prepares the altar. Verse 10, he stretches out his hand to take the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing for him. For now I know that you fear me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He looked, behold, there was a ram caught in the thicket, verse 13, by the horns. Now that's a mighty quiet ram that only makes noise at the right time. Because the ram is caught in the thicket, that means it's trying to get out of the thicket. He never hears the ram trying to get out of the thicket until he's finished the command to obey. Do you know your answer could be sitting right next to you, but you'll never know it until God is ready to reveal it. 
Your solution may be right here next to you. That ram was caught in the thicket right there next to him. He never saw it or heard it because God was not ready to reveal it yet. Abraham called the name of the place. Verse 14, Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided Jehovah Jireh. He names the place the Lord will provide because the word Jireh can be translated provide. So what is the relationship to the root to see and to the, a translation of the word that means to provide? Well, let me use another word that relates to provide and brings the two together. Provision. Vision means to see. But if I say provision, that means I provided something. If I made provision for you, I provided something for you. But in the word provision, that means I provided, is the word vision, that means I saw something. In other words, I saw a need, vision, and I took care of the need, provision. In other words, I addressed what I saw. So the root C tied to me addressing what I saw means I provided, which is provision. Or let me put it another way. God provides based on his Prevision. Let's say it another way. Prevision leads to provision. Prevision leads to provision. So the question is what must God see so that he might provide? When you're caught in the contradictions of life. When what you're going through does not make sense, is not fair, what must God see so that you can name the place and the mess you in Jehovah Jireh? So you can see God break through in a way you didn't plan on and he had to take care of it because there was no earthly human solution and you had to say the Lord must provide himself a solution for this one. What did he see? Well, let's go back. And let's look at a couple of things he saw. Verse 3, so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He obeyed immediately. Delayed obedience becomes immediate disobedience. Delayed obedience if God says do A and you thinking about it, meditating on it, considering it, you know, getting around to it, there's nothing for God to see. You have not acted on what he has said. He rises immediately, even though he doesn't understand, even though it doesn't make sense, he arises immediately. Delayed obedience is immediate disobedience and partial obedience is complete disobedience. In other words, if he would have gone halfway to the trip, he wouldn't have finished the journey. He would have said, like many of us, Lord, at least give me credit for getting up. At least give me credit for getting dressed. At least give me credit for saddling my donkeys. But I didn't ask you to get up, saddle your donkeys. I told you go to the mountain and sacrifice. See, what we want is delayed obedience and partial obedience, but full-time manifestation. Max of manifestation. No, no, no. When he saw that he would not withhold his son, if you are trusting God for your eternity, you ought to be able to trust him for time. Because eternity is a lot longer than time. Are you willing to trust God with your Isaac? With your Isaac. The thing that you want to release the least. The thing that means the most. The thing that you're holding tight and don't want to let go. And everybody has an Isaac. 
Everybody has that thing that you want more than life itself. He saw that God mattered more to him than Isaac. And he loved Isaac. He didn't stop loving Isaac to love God. He just decided to love God more. And loving God in faith doesn't mean simply having an emotional attachment. Loving God means acting out what God said. Not just singing songs, praying prayers, and hearing sermons. One of the reasons that some of us do not know the name Jehovah Jireh is God is still waiting for you to act on what he said even though you may not understand how it's going to work out how it's going to happen Isaac had to be placed on the altar when God said now I know that you fear me then and only then did the solution show up even though it was right next to him could it be that you've been waiting five years for something God would have given you in five minutes if he still wasn't waiting for you to complete your sacrifice? This means, single Christian, that you must give your singlehood over to God. That may be the Isaac in your life. The desire for a mate may be so strong that it's caused you to not follow God completely as a single and he could literally have the person he wants for you sitting next to you year after year and you never see it. Because the thing you he wants, you don't want to give him. Could be money. God, I will give the part I'm supposed to give to you after you give me more. To which God says, you're going to be waiting a long time. I want to know that you trust me enough to go to worship and honor me with the first fruits of what I give you, not what you happen to have left over. I want you to put it on the altar, my career on the altar, whatever it is that God commands. I don't understand how I'm going to make it. I don't understand how it's going to work out. I don't know what you're going to do, but this is what you said. This is what I'm going to do. Now you're going to have to supernaturally intervene because I can't fix this. Dr. Evans will come back with more of our message in a moment, including a look at the connection between Abraham's son and God's son. Right now, though, he's here with a thought for us. Dr. Evans? Well, folks, we hope this has been a blessed year for you. It's certainly been a blessing for us to be able to come your way and minister to you on a regular basis. I hope you've been encouraged by the challenge that we brought from God's Word. As we come to the end of the year, this is the most important time for our ministry. Our ministry will flourish or not flourish based on how God encourages our friends to join us and to support us for the end of this year. Would you be part of that provision through your generous year and contribution? Would you close out the year by endorsing what we have been doing with you and for you all year long? We can't do it without you. Please visit TonyEvans.org today or call 1-800-800-3222 and let us know we can count on your help. When you do, we'd like to send you the biggest thank you gift we've ever offered, the best of Tony Evans 2016. It contains 20 of Tony's most powerful, life-changing lessons of the past year, 10 on CD and 10 more via digital download. Among them, there's a look at spiritual problem solving, biblical advice on building a better marriage, conversations about how to put your God-given spiritual authority to work, and much more. So give us a call at 1-800-800-3222 or visit TonyEvans.org today and let Tony know he can count on your help. When you do, take a moment to browse through our library of CDs, DVDs, books, Bible studies, and more. They're all 35% off for the rest of the year. Again, that's TonyEvans.org or call our resource request line day or night at 1-800-800-3222. Where staff members are standing by to help you. Again, that's 1 800 800 3222. Right now, Dr. Evans is back with more of today's message. Let's join him. You can't hold on to Isaac and get Jehovah Jireh. See, you can't hold on to Isaac. See, we want Isaac and Jehovah Jireh. 
You can't have it. It's when he sees that he provides. So if you give him nothing to experience or to see, then he withholds the provision because he responds to faith. When you see Jairus show up, when you have this encounter, he got back Isaac because the angel stopped him. And the angel said, you know, uh, release him. Now I know that you, he got him back, but as a type, he gives him back Isaac. Plus. Because all Isaac gives is a little something, something. He's type. What does he give him? It says, then the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, Jehovah, because you have done this thing, because I saw you do it, and have not withheld your son, your only son, indeed I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice okay watch this then I'm going to give you back Isaac but that ain't nothing for what I'm getting ready to do now because I'm now getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to shower you with stuff that will have generational repercussions. You ain't seen nothing yet. In saving Isaac, you could keep Isaac and lose everything else. But because you were willing to put Isaac on the altar, you get Isaac back and everything else. See, a lot of us are trading Isaac for Isaac and everything else just so we can keep Isaac. But if all you have is Isaac, that's limited. Isaac is a type of God unleashing all that he has planned for you, all that he has in store for you, but he wants to know before he unleashes this that he has you. He's not going to unleash this when he, when the blessor is not more important than the blessing. Everybody's showing up in church today. Everybody is looking for their blessing and the blessing trumps the blessor. I love this phrase in chapter 22 and it's in verse 14 again. Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide as it is said to this day in the mount of Jehovah, in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Okay? He calls the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. But then he tells you where he provides. He says, it is provided in the mount of the Lord. He provides when there was immediate obedience and a specific location. The location was in the mount of the Lord. Well, what's the mount? The mount is Mount Moriah. That's where he told him to go. The Mount Moriah was the place where the sacrifice was going to be made. So Mount Moriah was the place of worship. What's my point? You must look at Isaac as an opportunity to worship. When you worship over your Isaac, when you say, God, I'm going to bless your name in spite of my pain. I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to worship God. I'm not doing this because I feel like it. I'm doing this to exalt the blessor. You make it a matter of worship. When God sees your worship, he makes your provision. It's in the mountain. It's part of your worship. It's not just doing something for God or, or, or being a good Christian. It is my celebration of God because that's the mountain. It's the place of the altar. He says, making it your worship is when I provide it. Making it your worship. When our bosses uh, want us to do something, they may ask us to sacrifice time. Stay overtime or work longer or come in on Saturday. They want you to sacrifice for the company. When evaluation time comes, they notice your sacrifice. In John chapter 8, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. 
And the Pharisees are condemning Jesus. And then Jesus makes this statement to the unbelieving Jews. Abraham saw my day and was glad. Mm. We are told that Abraham was walking. He lifted up his eyes. Remember that verse? He lifted up his eyes. Mount Moriah is just a couple of hundred feet from Golgotha. Mount Moriah is just a couple of hundred feet from the mount on which Jesus was crucified, Mount Calvary. Just a couple of hundred feet away from Mount Moriah. Abraham looked up and saw Mount Moriah. But John 8.56 says Abraham saw something else. He saw that one day God was going to enter into human history in the person of Jesus Christ and make provision for the sins of the world and become our Jehovah Jireh. So what God says the angel of the Lord did, which is Jesus in the Old Testament, for Abraham, he is still doing today because Isaac was a type through those who come through Jesus to demonstrate faith in Jesus Christ, God becomes your Jehovah Jireh. If you've been listening to our broadcast and you have not personally trusted Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins so that he can give you the gift of eternal life right now, I want you to go to God and transfer your trust from any and everything else except the Son of God who died on the cross for your sins and arose from the dead. In fact, I'm going to say a little prayer and you can repeat it after me. You just have to mean it for yourself. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner and that I can't save myself. I believe Jesus Christ, your son, died on the cross in my place for my sin, and I now am trusting him alone to forgive me and to give me the gift of eternal life that he promised to give to anyone who came to him for it. Thank you for saving me and help me from this day forward to live a life pleasing to you. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. And that goes for all of us here at The Alternative. We encourage you to get involved in a good Bible teaching church so you can grow. We also invite you to visit us at TonyEvans.org and click on the Jesus link at the top of the page for more information that will help you get your new life off to a great start. 2016 has been an eventful year for The Urban Alternative. Uniting Christian leaders across the country with a solemn assembly called The Gathering. Equipping churches to reach out to their communities through the National Church Adopt-A-School Initiative. Equipping and encouraging pastors and their families. Not to mention providing over 300 editions of our daily and weekly radio program, our weekly TV series, and our ever-growing collection of faith-building resources. But now the end of the year is upon us, and we only have a few days left to cover the cost of this year's work and launch into the new opportunities coming in 2017. As Dr. Evans said earlier, the urban alternative couldn't be what it is and do what it does if not for friends like you who pray for us faithfully and give generously to keep this ministry alive. And right now, your year-end gift can make all the difference. Please let us hear from you by Saturday, and we'll say thanks by sending you Tony's current series, The Best of Tony Evans 2016, a giant collection of 20 of his most popular messages of the past year. Visit TonyEvans.org today to make the arrangements, or call us at 1-800-800-3222, where people are standing by around the clock to help you. That's 1-800-800-3222. Somewhere between what we think and what we say, there's supposed to be a filter that catches the harmful words before they get out. Tomorrow, Dr. Evans will explain why that filter doesn't always work the way God wants it to, as he talks about the power of the words we use. I hope you'll be with us. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you. 